It seems like lifting to failure is a must, and this is something even cartoons with my good old pal SpongeBob seems to try to convey. But do we need to train to failure? Welcome to Science Based Fitness. Today we're looking at the topic of training to failure. My name's Adam, and I have a degree in exercise science, but who cares? I'm not an authority on this topic, and I'm gonna rely on the data. So let's not slow this process down, let's jump right into the video. Now data on this topic seems to be complicated, but I'm gonna make it simple to digest. Now there are two main categories to look at here, those trying to get stronger and those trying to get bigger. And yes, you should be training differently for those goals. If you want more information on that, I'll link a video at the end of this one. But Adam, what if I don't fall into one of these categories? Well then you're probably trying to lose weight or maybe get more tone. And if that's the case, you need to focus primarily on your diet so you don't have to worry about training to failure. A study from 2022 looked at how training to failure did using different loads, and it was able to shed some light on this topic. So out of 25 participants, four groups were assigned. Two of those groups trained to failure using light loads and heavy loads. The two remaining groups trained shy of failure using the same load parameters of 30% one rep max and 80% of your one rep max. Now three out of four of these groups saw almost the same amount of hypertrophy, but one did worse than all the rest. Now which group didn't fare as well? And it would be the group using a light load stopping shy of failure and you can see right here but look at this the group using light load training all the way to failure yield the best results for hypertrophy but hold on we're not done yet we have to look at those trying to get stronger and there's one additional factor that is a parameter to this study that is important but you need the information first so let's look at strength so all the same groups that were established tested their one rep max and then they tested to see what type of improvements they had who fared the best do you think now i've talked about how important training protocols are for trying to get stronger in other videos like i said i'm going to link a video at the end for you guys so you know but you shouldn't be surprised the two groups that were lifting heavy loads regardless of lifting to failure saw the best improvements and those lifting light regardless of training to failure fell pretty far behind but that one important factor that we still need to talk about is this it seems pretty obvious that three sets of 10 reps at failure is going to be much better than three sets of the same weight at just six reps. But this study decided to equate volume. Now, let me explain what that means. Instead of doing the three sets of 10 on leg extension to complete failure, they would mix in five or six sets to equal the same amount of volume that the group training to failure did. So at the end of the day, do you have to train to failure? No, it doesn't look like it but it might be more beneficial if one, you're trying to experience more hypertrophy. Those trying to accomplish strength should be training with heavier loads, but don't have to go all the way to failure. Now, this is where the science ends, my opinion starts. Personally, I use this type of information to push close to failure, and I don't worry about stopping one rep shy, and I'll just mix in an extra set at the end. That's the way I like to work out. It's totally up to you guys. I hope you guys found this video somewhat helpful. Click that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of my content. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. That video I talked about right up here, how to bench more weight and how you should be training for strength. We'll see you guys next time.